Hey everybody, I've got um, a lot of new mechanic ideas that I've begun developing and I'm going to show you one that I've already done um, about making a dark room and then having a torch that you can carry around but the torch only follows you for a set amount of time. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me just go ahead and run it. And then I'll explain how I did it. So uh, when we begin the game and we transition over, everything gets dark, right? Well, as soon as I grab a torch, suddenly I'm carrying the torch. Yes, I will hold the torch for you. And you can see it's on that side, and now it's gone. And then let me see if I can get out of here and go to the other, get the other torch. Let's see if I can, ah, I can't. All right, but the other torch, if you grab it, um, and it's angling out that way, it holds it to the right-hand side. So it, it, whichever way it's angled, it will go to one side or the other. Let me show you how I did that. So I'm going to take a look at the, uh, we'll start with the dark, uh, yeah, the darkness. Uh, actually, before we even go there, let me pause for a second. Okay, so uh, the sprite darkness is available. It is right near your, uh, it's in the assets. And you'll notice it's a really large image. Uh, what you want to do is set the origin to be middle center. And let's zoom in on this for a little bit. And what you can see is um, that uh, it's going to be invisible here, right where the character is. But then it has this gradient going into what's pure black. And that creates the darkness and it creates sort of the shadow. So the, this, the area of light surrounding the character. We also have a sprite torch, and on the sprite torch, the main thing we did, other than name it and import these three graphics, these are also just straight out of the assets folder, is I moved the origin to the bottom of the torch, so I put it at 1529, um, and so that um, helps us when we place it in the room, um, it will place it. By the way, you know, you can move it wherever you think is a good place to. Uh, probably the center of the bottom, there's no exact center. And so whether it's 1729 or whatever, just somewhere in the bottom of the torch is the key here. Okay, so that, those are the sprites. Let's take a look at the, um, the darkness object, first of all. So the object darkness has the sprite of darkness. It only has one event, end step. And the idea here is that just wait till the end of the step after the characters have been moved, then move the darkness to match where the player is. And so we, we just, at the end of every step, we just jump to the player's X and Y, but then we jump down 16. That's because the origin of the player is up a little high. It's up towards the top of the player, so we want to move halfway down the player, so it's sort of centered around the player. All right, and that's, that's really darkness, and that's how it follows the player. And the real interesting part is the torch. So in the torch, I've got a lot of code here, and so I'm going to like maximize this so you can see it. And we just remember this is the object torch. It has the sprite of torch. And we're going to begin on create. And like I said, a lot of code here. And in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and full screen this and uh, get it nice and big. And so the idea here is um, we created a variable, call it with player. And that indicates is the torch with the player. I could say is player holding or something like that, whatever. Um, image rotation, I give it a 20 degree, degree rotation, so it will rotate either to the left of the wall or to the right, right of the wall. I give it a scale factor of 1, and this is something I'm not entirely sure I got it working exactly how I want it. You'll see what I'm trying. We set it to 1, and uh, it just means that when we scale it, we're just going to make it normal size. Uh, what we want to do, though, is we want to rotate the torch based on where is its position to the nearest wall. So we create a variable called nearest wall, and we set that to an instance nearest. And um, then once we find the nearest wall, and uh, by the way, instance nearest, you just put the what nearest to what location. And X and Y means the location of the torch, in, in particular that bottom center of that torch. Uh, that's where that X, Y is going to be. And then we just find the closest wall to it. Uh, walls are dropped onto the grid. Here, let me show you what I mean. So it's good for you to see the room and uh, show you kind of like how that works. And let's just zoom in on here. And you see the grid. The wall origin is actually the upper left-hand corner. So if I take the object torch and I just drop it. Oh, I got to, hold on a second. I got to move it. Oh, 
Uh, one other thing, we're going to get to this, but it's really important to note. Turns out having a layer for the darkness of its own layer really helped with the animated transitions. So um, I do recommend you add an extra instance layer, call it darkness, put it on top, and that's where you're going to put the darkness. The other thing that's kind of cool about that is that um, we're not going to create the darkness if you don't want to. Actually, I think what we're doing is, oh, we don't have it. Um, somewhere we're creating the darkness. I'll find out where that was, and then we'll play off of that. Uh, all right, so we got the instances layer, and now I'm going to drop the torch, and you'll see, you see how it sort of just attaches right to the grid. So the nearest wall is actually going to be this particular wall here. The X of the wall, the X of the torch share the same spot because they're on the grid. Keep that in mind. You can take the grid off, and then you can take that torch and move it out if you like. That is your choice. Uh, I am going to just kind of drop there because I can deal with that in the code. And let's go back to the object torch. We're going to go back to the create event, and let's go ahead and hide this. And the idea here is that um, we check the nearest wall. So we're going to check our X position of the torch. Is it less than or equal to the nearest wall? And that's the it's the equal to that's really important here. You don't want to leave that out or it, it won't work. And then we take the nearest wall, we put its X position. If it is, we're going to rotate to the left. We take its current image angle. This is built in, and its default is set to zero, I suppose. And as we add an image rotation, it's actually going to rotate to the left. It's going to rotate uh, counterclockwise. And if it's not, the nearest wall is less than or equal to, then we just want to image rotate it the other way. And that way it allows us to, you can see that they rotate different ways. So that was the object torch create. Um, we're going to do step. Oh, we don't have a step. I must have deleted that, and, or not deleted, I must have changed that. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the event. Don't need step. We are going to do a draw GUI, and this one is a little bit bigger. And I just want to want to talk about kind of what's going on here because this is an important piece. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find out, are we with the player or not? If we are with the player, then what we want to do is check the image angle. Now, if we rotated it to the right, it'll, or if we added it, sorry, if we added the image angle, then it's going to be greater than zero. If we subtract it, it's going to be less than zero. So what we do is we check the image angle, okay? And um, we set the X position of the torch based on the player's X, which is going to be the center of the player. And we're going to just take 10 pixels away, move that torch just a little bit to the left. But we're going to take the, where we're going to set the Y to the object player's Y we're going to add 27. We're going to move it down pretty far. Remember, that's the bottom of the torch. And so it just moves that torch down. Uh, you can fiddle around with the numbers. These numbers here, the exact values, you're going to have to just sort of experiment with. I like the way it holds it in the location. So I'm, I'm, oh, I'm okay and I'm happy with it. So you'll note the only difference between this line and this line is really the X. So one thing I can do is I can just delete that all together. And then I can put, no, oh, did I delete that? All right. Oh, ah, <laughs> dot y plus, I think I said 27. Hope I didn't break that. Uh, and so that's only if it's with the player. So if it's with the player, it just moves with the player. Um, and if it was angled to the left, it holds it. So it's holding it so the flame isn't like over his face. That would be bad. You wouldn't hold it that way, which is why I did that. And then, um, then otherwise, we just make sure while we're drawing GUI, we just want to keep it there in the start location. Okay. And then um, now uh, we have an alarm thing going on here, and I did it in Draw GUI, and um, I just want to explain this in a moment. Let me go back to the alarm first of all. Uh, oh no, collision with the object player. This is important. Uh, if we collide with the object player, whoa, all right. then what we want to do is we want to uh, make the object darkness twice as large. Okay. 
uh, double the size of the darkness. So we're going to double the size of the darkness, and then we're going to set an alarm. Now this is a this is a tricky one here. Um, this caused me some problems, and I just set the alarm normally. But the problem is, if the torch is moving with the player, and it's with the player, um, we don't want to keep setting the alarm because this is a collision with the player. The collision's going to keep. It's going to. Oh, I just realized what I needed to do. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Ah! Cut. Enter. Actually, this is the collision with the... Yes, it is. I do want to do that. Okay. Ha ha ha. Alright, we're going to test something out in a moment. I had another problem. Um, double the size of the darkness. And what we want to do is we want that darkness to slowly start fading. Oh yeah. Yes, yes we do. And then we set with player to true. That means the player is carrying the torch. So we only set the alarm if the player wasn't currently holding the torch. Now, I might... Yeah, okay. So once we set the alarm... Uh, by the way, the alarm before it gets set is set to negative one. So that... That means the alarm has not been triggered. If the alarm has not been triggered when we collide with the player, we then set the alarm, which then makes that greater than zero. We double the size of the darkness, and we tell it it's with the player, so now it can move with the player. Now, here comes the fun part. Let's talk about draw GUI. Now, here we go. So first of all, we already talked a little bit about the X start and all that stuff, but let's talk about the alarm. Okay. I am going to change this a little bit here, and okay, so we're going to say if the alarm is greater than zero, then in other words, the alarm has been set, and alarm zero is less than, we're going to pick an amount, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do um, 60 at first, so it's going to go like 150, and it's going to count down, when it gets to 60, what we're going to do is we're going to start scaling the darkness to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Let me test it to make sure my math is correct. Um, and yeah, 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 I think this is going to work. I really hope it does. Okay, hit enter. Notice how it doesn't get dark until after. And here we go. I just want to see what happens to that darkness. Is it? Yes! Do you see that? It's fading out. Bam. All right, cool, it worked, it worked, it worked, it worked. Okay, so now uh, a couple things here. Um, setting that alarm, we might want to set it greater than 150 so it doesn't do this sort of scale back down, but that gives the player a warning that it's going down. And so the idea here is the scale factor is that, um, so we're gonna scale it, image X scale, image Y scale, and the very least we want is the number one. So an image X scale or Y scale of one actually is pretty decent. And um, so it can't be smaller than that. Um, so it can't get smaller than one. And uh, then we add one times the alarm, whatever step it's at, divided by 60. So 60 divided by 60 is one. So it's one plus one times one. So it's one plus one, that becomes two. So at the 60th frame, we're still good, but then it becomes 59, and then it's 59 divided by 60, 58 divided by 60. When it gets down to, say, 30 divided by 60, we're now at 50%, and it's 1 times 50%, so it's 1 plus 0.5. It's 1 and a half. Now we're getting smaller. So this, as the alarm keeps counting down, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that's it. That's how the torch works, okay? And let's just fiddle around. Just I'm gonna now that I know that all works. Um, and by the way, I learned a lot. I should go back to the part where I was having trouble to make sure you understand what's going on. Um, I what was happening is if if this was the collision with the player, and you got to remember that um, remember until we destroy torch, okay, and as long as the 
torch is with the player. The collision event will get triggered every frame. Check to see if the alarm has been set or not. And honestly, that's pretty much everything. Because here's the thing, with player equals true, there's no reason to, tr to actually run that code every single loop. Um, and then let's just kind of like break this out and then move torch with player. Bam, with player equals true. Yeah, there we go. So that's the key to all of this. And I was having trouble because I forgot that the collision event is it's going to keep colliding because it's hovering over the player. Okay, so I think there was one last one, which was the alarm. And let me make sure I have that uh, covered. Alarm zero. Yeah, I don't think I did that yet. Okay, so alarm zero. Do, do, do. And um, let's just, there, there we go. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so what we do is when the alarm goes off, it's already been, it's full, you know, the timer's done. It's time to get rid of the torch. We set the object darkness image X scale, Y scale to one, so it's normal size. Then we destroy the torch and we tell it the player, it's no longer with the player. That is actually probably unnecessary because we've already destroyed it. Um, so, but you know, whatever, uh, play it safe, right? Okay, so that is the torch mechanic. I hope that you find this helpful and I hope this will also help you in future uh, collision events whenever there's something that moves with the player. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. And I may or may not have one, maybe two more videos. Don't count on it. It's almost the end of the school year. Students are taking finals now, but we'll see. Maybe this summer I'll pick this up again. Anyway, thanks so much for watching.